Now, okay, so the, streets, uh, the streets would like to know. We want to talk about the president coming to Wisconsin, all the things. But you were at the State of the Union, okay? And when the president was coming down the aisle, you had your phone out, you had the photos, he was talking to you. But Marjorie Taylor Greene was also next to you. Can, what was going on in the moment? You were lit, lit tell us, what was the conversation? Because we couldn't hear it. And I text you, okay, I know, I know. on the floor, like, well, ma'am, what did she say? Tell us, we need to know. Well, first of all, those are coveted seats right there on the mm-hmm, aisle. As mm-hmm. you know, you see the usual suspects sitting on the aisle. And you've never seen Gwen Moore in 19 years sitting on the aisle. Mm-hmm. So I came in late, you know, as usual. And the ushers were saying, you can't sit here like the four rows from the back. Because a senator, this is a senator's seat. Oh, wait a minute. So I kind of got into it with the ushers. And so one of my colleagues, not to be named, said, oh, I got this perfect seat for you right over here. <laughs> Nobody wanted to sit next to MTG. Mm-hmm. So I said to myself, because she messed with me the first day of the 117th Congress, the, the, the very first day she messed with me, uh, you know, accusing me of spreading COVID and so on and so forth. And, you know, so I just said, Gwen, you know, you don't want to stand up for two and a half hours. As I pointed out to her, Joe Biden is long-winded, so I knew I was going to be there for a minute, so you don't have to say anything to her, Gwen. You know, remember your ethics training. You don't have to agree with people. And I thought I would just ignore her. But I couldn't, mm-hmm. you know. I, I was fact-checking her in real time. There you go. Uh, and sitting next to her? Sitting next to her. Oh, wow. And responding to some of the things she said quietly and to some of her outbursts. Um, and really, she is a human being. I was trying to draw, bring out some empathy and to see if she had any. Humanity, yeah. You know, yeah. And, and, and to recognize that, you know, instead of spending all of our time, you know, being surprised and shocked at Donald Trump having these supporters to try to, to listen to them. Um, when, when the president, for example, I think this is a really good example, when he talked about uh, Betty Mae Fikes, mm-hmm. who I've met on the marches to Selma, uh, to the P- Edmund Pettus Bridge, when he talked about her being there uh, and, 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 and voting rights and John Lewis, she said, 1965? She was really, truly surprised. I think no, nobody is having their uh, being prevented from voting. Now that was 1965. I said, no, girl, they tried to take my vote from me because I voted and used a, a drop box uh, in the last election. As a matter of fact, the election, you know, fake election scheme. Just come on, Wisconsin. Started in Wisconsin. Well, and so I pointed that out to her. I said, yeah, they tried to steal my vote. That, and that actually happened. Um, you know, another example. You know, she was sitting there muttering about how he shuttered businesses and so forth during COVID. And I said, well, girl, COVID was a real thing. My eldest son almost died from COVID and was in a hospital on a ventilator for a week. So who knew during the State of the Union that the members were, you know, there was... It's, it's like member diplomacy happening well, but, during yeah, yeah. the State of the Union. But it does speak uh, to that point, Congresswoman, about member diplomacy, that, it, that at this point, uh, it requires a lot of diplomacy mm-hmm. for, for democracy-centered uh, folks who are uh, trying to avoid the extremism, mm-hmm. trying to um, reimagine the conversation Americans are having. And you just gave us some, some very illustrative examples of the importance of that, of fact-checking real time. But here's the, here's the interesting part for me. Those being fact-checked don't want to be fact-checked. They want to live in the land of, of ignorance because it furthers a political agenda that they think they benefit from. How have you found the House, um, given how it's been run in recent times, um, not just changed over the years, because we can document that, but how do you, uh, how does that, a, a reflection of what's actually going on out in the country, do these people really represent uh, people who think and believe, you know, like a Marjorie Taylor Greene? Well, that was 1965. No one's votes are being suppressed now, when in fact, we know that's a lie. That's not mm-hmm. what's happening. How do, how do we cut through that 
conversation? And did that State of the Union kind of set that conversation up for this political season, um, the way Joe Biden sort of one-on-one -on -one with some of the members um, who wanted to come at him and just kind of say, okay, let, let's, let's do this. You want to engage, let's engage. Well, you know, I mean, that's really important, you know, because I, I think, you know, while we try to present the most lofty view of things, it's really important to acknowledge people's feelings uh, and how they feel. But we had a conversation about taxes, uh, everything, and to really acknowledge that. So when I think about people in, in public, for example, oh, you know, Joe Biden didn't forgive the, the, the student loans like he said. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm still hurting. You got to acknowledge to people, look, we get it that the inflation that we experience is kind of a, a, a you know, a there there's a a a lag a lagging indicator of how well things are doing but i want to point out to people when you know when i buy my four dozen eggs for my three great grandchildren and my great nephew i'm going to point out you see these eggs are cheaper than they were mm. and everybody those those 290,000 jobs a day that were created you know i'm going to make people admit that they know somebody, a black male that now has a job that didn't have one. They know a disabled person who now has a job that didn't have a person. I mean, I think we have to point out, I get it that the rent is too damn high. I get that. But, but, in, but when we say inflation is coming down, mm -hmm. that there's a course correction coming, we just want you to believe it. Mm. Well, I, well, hopefully it's something we hear when the president is in Milwaukee soon on this tour. I know we're going to see you on the tarmac and at the events. Congresswoman Goodmore, we just appreciate you for coming in with us this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for the privilege. Oh.